Hello and welcome back to another episode of Psych and Guides. Today we are looking at Warhammer 40k team builds. I am going to do this little series of different team builds or team comps that I'm running and today we're going to look at what is in my opinion the single strongest kind of all-round team combination uh, which utilizes the best equipment in the game as well as, um, in my perspective, the strongest interaction. As you can see, I played the game to a point where there is no more equipment that I could get. All of the different items that uh, Warhammer has to offer uh, are in my possession. So I do have a fair overview about what the best equipment looks like. I will uh, first explain the idea of the combination of uh, characters that you're seeing as well as kind of uh, the loadout and then we're going to see some gameplay footage so in terms of the strongest combination this team here consists out of a combination of stun as well as um, interceptor ability point uh, push over or um, overload and uh, really that combines both of the strongest concepts in the game number one stun whenever you're executing a stun unit everybody gets ap back so it's an incredibly effective uh, way of uh, feeding your team with ability points however some of the enemies are immune to stun uh, where uh, typically full stun teams i wouldn't say struggle but they need to think about how they deal with those enemies and that's really where the other strongest uh, mechanic comes into play the interceptor and overloading ap onto the interceptor the interceptor as a class already extremely strong but if you overload a uh, set class then um, you basically use their incredibly high damage output to your advantage and uh, continue dealing uh, the most uh, damage as the setup generally um, of uh, this particular class setup you would want to have either a justicar or a paladin uh, the justicar in my opinion is slightly better because he can do almost everything that the paladin can and on top of that shift three action points over to the interceptor um, the first class uh, is responsible for the stunning part in this particular combination, making sure that individuals are regularly stunned so that they can be executed. Uh, then you either choose an interceptor or a purifier, a melee purifier. Um, the interceptor has the advantage that they are a little bit less baby city, so you don't need to walk up to enemies, you have a greater mobility, so overall it's easier to pull off uh, flashy plays, and overall the chassis uh, deals in a similar amount uh, of damage uh, than the um, uh, purifier, the purifier really wants uh, their uh, passive ability is stacked up, deal more per strike, but the interceptor does have uh, ways of getting more attacks so overall the interceptor deals even slightly more damage then you do have a librarian who is uh, supporting with stun and is the taxi so they are going to teleport everybody in the right position and you have an apothecary um, who mainly is going to uh, give out biomancies um, to uh, create uh, stun uh, possibilities as well as create options for the team uh, to do really high damage uh, melee crits so that's the core idea let's take a look at uh, the builds and the individual equipment and why i have chosen what i've chosen all right let's dive into the individual builds so first off the justicar or the paladin that you're going to use is mainly used uh, to stun opponents you can do that in various forms and i will just shortly go through alternatives so that you can see how you can uh, build them and why I think that this build uh, would uh, be the strongest one that you uh, could do. In terms of abilities, uh, for him really, on the ch uh, chapter is the main uh, shtick that uh, they need to pull off. If you go with a paladin, uh, this note here with the extra stun would be the shtick. On top of it, if you're going into crushing charge, you can help with uh, stunning even further. And if you do have a lot of points in the very late uh, game, I suggest going for rapid uh, reload combined with uh, higher crits um, as well as enduring reflexes and ruthless precision. So really what that does is uh, there is twice a turn 
a almost 100% chance that he will reload as well as uh, that when he crits in melee he would gain 1 AP automatically so that's 2 AP that uh, this character can get by themselves. I'm running a Sanctic Shard tier 3 so the 50% chance is actually 100% uh, chance. So those are the important build spots if you go and start with Honor the Chapter that's good enough. So now uh, secondly if we're looking at the equipment um, I am running a couple of um, items that I will need to explain. So number one is for uh, the best armor in the game for that particular position specifically. I'm running the morning plate which does have a uh, very unique uh, option called a penitent where whenever the willpower is empty they will start spending health points and that really makes uh, the Justicar completely independent of uh, willpower doesn't even uh, need to look at it even if he doesn't get the executions uh, he can spend his entire um, health pool and mind you uh, with a single heal you can regain quote unquote a lot of uh, willpower so he can always overcharge uh, his honor the uh, chapter and really um, even use that in order to transfer willpower um, if he were was to transfer willpower with honor the chapter which if you overcharges in case you're unaware uh, it gives one willpower for four will uh, willpower on top of the 3 AP that you're shifting over. Even if he was to spend 8 willpower over 2 turns just to heal the apothecary, that would still be net uh, positive because he could uh, be healed back up that uh, those hit points. So, very great uh, interaction there. In terms of the remaining loadout, the important stuff is whatever hammer you're using. I'm using the strongest weapon in, in the game, in my perspective, which is uh, called Warp Breaker. Uh, a huge area of effect attack which works together uh, with uh, the strong arm biomancy so every single uh, target it gets essentially three stun per hit on top of it uh, they get damage the other alternative that uh, you can run if you want it is blessing of faith another ultra strong hammer uh, that by itself if you're uh, using four strike will already do four stun so it's a very very strong single target stun weapon to continue uh, stunning however the strong arm plus the aoe just gives more bang for the buck uh, which is why i'm running that in terms of uh, the ranged weapon uh, I, I do have a fallback with uh, apothecary uh, apothecary's woe uh, which is a, a specific weapon that allows you to not only increase the crit chance uh, to 100 percent when you're psi bolting uh, but also then uh, have precision uh, targeting and precision targets from time to time allow additional stuns or just allow very nasty abilities to not uh, go off so that's why he is ha having that uh, it's basically a ranged uh, mm, disarm or dislodging ability so his only job is to create stun uh, for everyone uh, else as well as shifting ability points into uh, the interceptor and he himself can already generate two free AP um, with uh, the um, uh, with the uh, honor of the chapter he can uh, trade one AP for three AP so that's another two AP that he can generate which is net positive four AP independent of any stuns and with every stun he will create more AP so that's where uh, the source of a lot of the AP is coming from moving on to the interceptor which is the core of uh, this build the interceptor really needs to deal the most uh, possible damage and as such as a loadout before we're going uh, into the actual uh, build I have uh, chosen Radiant Guardian because it gives a passive equipment uh, slot and resistance on top of it. There are a couple of other uh, options as well. For instance, Titan's Aegis, which is armor plus passive, uh, or uh, Champion's Plate, which is a little bit more hit points plus passive. So knock yourself out, do whatever you want. Uh, 32 hit points is plenty from uh, my take. I also don't necessarily need armor as much, but the resistances are nice um, helping to not get afflicted by um, stuff that lies on the ground. So 
uh, therein that's that that was my rationale in terms of abilities the most important uh, stuff here is the following um, number one you want to go into uh, the teleportation route specifically getting all the way up to the teleportation boost because that allows you to uh, get a one teleportation per uh, round or per, tur uh, per turn for free secondly you want to get into the melee discipline because that allows you to gain crit uh, chance 15 percent and two crit damage and on top of uh, that once per turn uh, you get one ap for critting now once you have done all of that uh, the next uh, stop uh, the next stop would be enduring reflexes which gives you plus one use for all autos that means two teleportations for free meaning also your teleportation strike is always for free if you do have enough uh, willpower to spend uh, that's basically just free damage to everyone um, and that also means twice around you will get a free ap uh, on top of that if you get the free war gear slot you can run the sanctic shard making that 50 percent uh, base chance 100 percent so this character by himself can already create two ap just by crits and let's talk about crits uh, since we are running the Augorium scroll for 20% extra crit, the 15% extra crit um, uh, by himself, that's already 35% um, base crit. So all we need is a weapon that kind of gets us above the 50% uh, crit uh, line, because from there on you can then uh, use the stratagem um, strengths in spirit, which gives everybody 50% crit chance and it gets you to a solid 100% uh, crit chance. So. With that combination, Sanctic Chart plus Ogorium Scroll, you only need a weapon uh, with a, a little bit of crit and the highest possible damage that you could get. And the weapon that does exactly that, there are a couple of weapons that are good for it. Uh, in my perspective, the best one uh, for this particular build is Final Justice. Now, Final Justice has a low base damage but gets two additional damage uh, for four strike. Then four crit damage gets that uh, sweet 20% crit and on top of it, it has Auto Righteous, which has a 25% chance, together with the Sanctic Chart, that's a 75% chance to give you, whenever you crit, 1 AP. This can normally trigger uh, once per turn, but I am not 100% sure, I uh, don't want to go on a record saying something wrong, but I think that this year uh, also applies to auto abilities from enduring reflexes from weapons meaning that the hammer itself not only has a whooping 10 uh, damage um, and then on top of it you get uh, the extra crit damage from uh, Liber Demo uh, Demonicum uh, which is 14 and then you get uh, the mobility biomancy for 17 damage per strike but that uh, final justice also gives you two AP per round um, if you're critting and on top of uh, that uh, the, the hammer uh, just overall is fantastic as long as you do have willpower so we're, we need to have a little bit of willpower but we're going to kill a lot of stuff so that's not going to be a problem alternative loadouts just in case you're interested there are a couple of them uh, there is a level two um, uh, falcon blade called sorrow which does have twice a uh, turn a 50 percent uh, chance to uh, give you one ap so in combination with the uh, sanctic chart that's uh, essentially uh, twice per turn 100 percent with a passive ability thrice per turn uh, so if you want to maximize um, for uh, ability uh, for action points that's the way to go but it only has eight instead of ten points of damage another option is just to go for maximum crit uh, Ogen's edict in this case would uh, do the trick uh, you're well above uh, the hundred percent crit 150 actually so those are good alternatives there are a couple of others that uh, you can run a few of uh, the uh, higher level um, the higher level um, uh, halberds for instance are good uh, demon flayer uh, is one example or titan's wrath as an another example or uh, recanter if you just want great uh, general baseline damage but uh, this year also is only 10 points of damage uh, if you put everything together so it is 
just as good as Final Justice minus the Auto Righteousness, which is why I put Final Justice um, in the build. So that is your damage dealer, um, and the Interceptor will uh, get their three normal AP. Then they will get three additional ones from the Justice Car. That's already six. Then they get two from their um, crit. Um, of their class ability so we're at eight and then they get two from the hammer which uh, gets them to 10 ap bar any other um, interference in terms of um, in terms of uh, say executions so very very strong build here all right speeding up because the other two aren't that um, impactful they serve the role but they are not at the core um, as for our uh, librarian uh, we definitely uh, want uh, the teleportation uh, the next uh, thing that you should go for is uh, the psychic shriek for stunning because that's going to be their role. Um, some extra damage and Vortex Discipline is fine. If they do have a lot of willpower, that's great. Um, I had enough points to spend, so we're uh, running a high crit um, ranged build with him as well on top of it, but you won't have uh, the liberty to, to do that at the beginning. Uh, the um, the uh, Librarian itself already has 25% focus, so uh, he comes with a 50% chance of gaining a will point whenever they use a warp ability. So the 15 is actually a little bit more. In terms of loadout, I uh, went fully into, uh, leaned fully into the stunning route. So we're going with uh, Keeper of the Faith, which is uh, the s uh, strongest armor if you want grenades. So very, very strong uh, armor value, high hit points. Uh, grenades have plus two ammunition and plus two range so we're using Empyrean brain mine is three times five stun which is the equivalent of uh, basically 15 willpower but in a bigger area and you can really use that in order to set up the battlefield uh, nicely as uh, the ranged weapon i mentioned that that will bring all of uh, the damage i'm using sisters tier seven base damage two on top of it with psybol one with crit uh, damage on top of that and since we have skilled uh, into his uh, ranged abilities He's getting three additional uh, crit damage and uh, armor bypassing, so armor piercing on the Psy Bolter. So we're rocking 13, let that sink in, 13 uh, damage uh, with the Psy Bolter uh, for the meager price of one willpower, uh, which is fantastic. So phenomenal uh, DPS if they need uh, to support. In terms of final loadout, um, I'm using the Staff of Supremacy simply because I like uh, the extra willpower and there is a 75% chance that we're triggering an Aegis, so uh, that's just additional, uh, I think, five uh, Aegis, so they are running around with nine armor, which isn't too shabby. And finally, our Apothecary. Um, who uh, really uh, skills like an H, uh, so uh, so to speak. Uh, first off, you want uh, the servitors because uh, they are very very helpful, and a lot of the servitors just make your life easier. And then secondly, you want to go into the biomancies, which uh, really support this build. So for starters, we do have the warp speed biomancy, move speed, and um, uh, two extra crit damage. And then the other good one is the Iron Arm Biomancy, which uh, allows us to have three uh, stun on top of every single stri uh, melee strike. So that in itself uh, is going to be the combination. Um, Iron Arm Biomancy goes to our Justicar, uh, the Warp Speed Biomancy to our uh, Crit uh, Interceptor. There's a lot of other stuff going on as well. Uh, if you have enough points, uh, Sympathic Biomancy is nice because uh, you can buff yourself. That combined uh, with uh, the Ruthless Precision melee damage as well as extra crit damage means if they are uh, buffing someone else with uh, warp speed, they get it uh, themselves and can hit quite hard 
uh, with all of that extra crit damage. I've built this character as a full support. Uh, since you are using Biomancies, I wanted the maximum willpower, which resulted in me going with Scholar's Devotion, uh, 5 willpower, immunity to being drained. There are other alternatives that uh, you could uh, do. You could go for a higher focus, uh, for instance, uh, therefore increasing the chance that that uh, you are affecting yourself uh, with Biomancies. Um, Th that's fine. Uh, for me, I wanted uh, to keep it pure and therefore the five, uh, uh, the five uh, willpower there. Um, as for the ranged weapon, I am doing a little bit of a cheeky trick here. Soul Hammer is the name of the game. The only bolter that uh, does have in a very much stun focus. So the weapon itself already stuns for two. With Psy Bolt it stuns for four, which means gives you a ranged option for the Apothecary to also stun and allow others to finish. Uh, as the melee weapon, I'm using the best melee weapon for Biomancies, which is Life Giver. Unfortunately, no tier 3 weapon has the plus one turn, uh, but it comes with 8 base healing and uh, extra, uh, extra Biomancies. And since I'm already uh, healing, I've given uh, him uh, the Hala Skull. The Hala Skull um, allows for uh, just the quote unquote oh shit button. Um, if you are, um, if you, if you want to um, get a complete pack off of you uh, because you made a mistake or whatnot, that is the mimic beacon of Warhammer. There is an option where you could theoretically get that Apothecarian Skull, allowing you to do your um, biomancies on any range. But it takes up that slot, uh, doesn't really have any ammunition, and on top of it costs you willpower to use. So I really, really didn't uh, like uh, the uh, the Apothecarian Skull. I think it's a bit of a mismatch uh, in design. As long as you're staying close to your brethren, you should not have any problems. So that's uh, the team. Let's take a look how it plays because I've uh, talked uh, through a lot. As the stratagems, we're using Strength of Spirit to get to the 100% crit. We're using uh, the Willpower 1 to uh, refill, if needed, uh, the Librarian um, and or the Apothecary. And on top of it, uh, we're having Tide of Shadows, uh, mainly for the um, all-team purifying and 100% resistance, if needed. So that's all you need. Those are the strongest stratagems in, in my perspective. Uh, let's uh, directly start and give it a go. All right, we're running one of uh, the most difficult missions. We're having a Bloomspawn spreader. Uh, so that is a five um, infestation planet. We're already having a huge uh, warp uh, surge corruption, but we're not even going to bother with that because we are going to clear that entire map in one turn. I'll show you exactly how. So let's start with the Biomancies. We do have the Iron Arm Biomancy and we want to uh, get that to our Justicar. There you go. And then we do have the Warp Speed Biomancy, which we're putting onto our damage dealer. Again, there you go. We're doing that pre-combat, uh, so that we're not, uh, because we're abusing the uh, combat entering feature. The moment that we're entering combat, uh, everybody will get refunded their action points and typically also their abilities. So let's uh, start because we want to taxi in with um, giving the librarian uh, the option to teleport in. Warp charge. Everybody is teleporting in. As you can see, we're uh, nicely in the middle of a pack of enemies, but that very soon will work in our favor. Cool. So, what's uh, the general approach uh, here? Uh, if you, as you can see, these guys up here uh, do have six. Uh, respectively seven uh, stun. So our general approach is use one of the Empyrean uh, Mines because it doesn't cost any willpower. Get them down to three. Use our Justicar. Who unfortunately landed very, very far behind. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to move to, uh, to here. 
And with a force striking, you can see that everybody else uh, gets hit. Not only did we just silence all of them, but we also hit all of them. And you can see three of them are immediately uh, ta uh, taken out, which gives us the nice option to move up and execute. Now is a good time, or as good of a time as ever, to start uh, giving us that extra crit chance. That was stupid. I am the Empress Fury! Good, by now you can see we have very nicely uh, caught up on a lot of action points. We're using our Apothecary from behind to use that Stun Bolter. Support Fire, by the way, does not uh, break uh, the stun. And you can also see that with our Interceptor, although we so only get Teddy one AP unworthy. back every single time, the Hammer, as well as his passive abilities, have already gotten him all the way there. So, next up... There is corruption brooding here. You can see... <laughs> Single, uh, single hit uh, kills, as well as very solid 18, 19 points of, no, that was a 20 point uh, of damage strike. So, now uh, the kind of careful part of it. Number one, um, let's uh, heal. The careful part because I want to I position myself so that we can con uh, continue our uh, onslaught without uh, pulling another uh, pack. So that is good. We're seeing we need to go over there. So that's good enough. What is your will? Now is, by the way, a good time to do whatever you need to do. Unleash For instance, uh, re reload isn't even needed because we're not. We're ending the combat here. You can see we're now reloaded and the only person uh, that really matters in terms of moving is our librarian. This triggers the tree. We're now in combat again, new combat uh, phase. Or charging over here. Um, the librarian takes free free willpower uh, from uh, the seats. Always try to optimize that a little bit. And you can see by four striking, five AC, 30, uh, 30 uh, hit points, and after a single strike. We're looking at uh, 12 hit points, so that was uh, a whooping, whooping uh, strike of 23 uh, damage. Um, and we're moving with the librarian, since uh, the librarian will have problems getting out of uh, out of here. We're already moving them as far forward as possible, and we're using the honor the uh, chapter on him good librarian almost uh, there continue kill librarian has enough will uh, will points to continue we're standing here more honor the Chapter. Very good. We're back in the next combat, which allows us to teleport everybody to here. 
just in case you're wondering, uh, this is now the point where after three taxis the librarian is kind of getting out of uh, steam. But that's exactly why we do have the willpower stratagem uh, with us. So all you are doing is you're taking willpower and are refilling him. Uh, so are refilling him so that the librarian is Gucci again. There you go. Librarian is full. Librarian is using uh, this option to hit all of uh, them. Get down! Good, and we're being efficient with our strikes as well. See that AoE stun procs nicely yet again. Free teleport into hit, execute. Glory to Zyphos. Hit, execute. Mercy in death! My blade is yours. And even with not serve. standing directly uh, next to someone, he continues to stun all of them, right? Good. Moves to here. Do the stun. And we haven't even seen uh, the damage. I'll show you some some other stuff. So that's the that's the base idea uh, behind it. Let uh, this guy. Can be stunned. There we go. Cool. And you can see we have plenty, plenty of uh, of action points left over. Just want to show you, uh, showcase a bit of ranged uh, DPS as well. Look at that. Massive damage. Together with uh, support fire, uh, he might as well deal even more damage. So you can see that uh, even the ranged damage dealers could hold on their own if uh, they wanted to. This is just a support uh, dealing damage at, uh, at this point. Four actions dealt yeah, a little bit over um, 45 uh, points of damage. And that's really it. We have moved through the map as if it is no one's business. Legendary difficulty, uh, that is. Yes. Another vile edifice of corruption Simply utilizing well done, uh, the power of uh, both stunning as well as uh, the AP uh, pushing into the interceptor. I'm going to showcase a couple of other builds as well. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed uh, this one as it uh, certainly was one of uh, the stronger or basically the strongest composition that you uh, can do in the game and if you like it leave a comment down below let me know what you're running and uh, maybe give it a try take care have a good one and bye bye